Now, it just wouldn't be uh, every other Friday without some board game news. You know, the Olmecs didn't have any board game news, now did they? And look what happened to them. Millennia of mystery. Not on my watch. Up first, we have Village Big Box Edition that was announced by Eggert Spiel for early 2023. But what caught my eye was, well, look at it. It's not just an edition that includes the base game as well as the very often hard to find expansions, the inn and the port, as well as all the promos ever released all in one place. But it's got a fresh new look, which I really like. Oh, it also has a brand new marriage expansion, though I suppose I can't hold that against them, especially as there's now a solo mode as well as some revised gameplay, dual layer player boards and a larger double sided main board that eliminates the need for the overlays used in the original expansions. In Village, the family member placement Euro game, each player takes the reins of a family and attempts to help them prosper. Also time is a thing, so given enough time, people will move on from being alive with those who find themselves immortalized in the village chronicles bringing honor to their family and bringing them one step closer to victory i've always wanted to try village and now i have one heck of a jumping in point but jumping in right now to this video is the sponsor who in part made this episode possible the versus system two player card game crossover volume four from upper deck the annual crossover and final issue for Volume 4 of the Versus System two-player card game not only expands on multiple fan-favorite teams, but also introduces all-new terrain and boss battle cards. Power up your main character with new abilities and take your card battling skills to the next level, such as with Master Mold, the master of the Sentinels who gains the powers of his fallen friends, who is also joined by Beast and the Scarlet Witch. This volume also includes special locations like the prime piece of real estate located at the heart of the Louisiana Swampland, the nexus of all realities, which I imagine must require a lot of housekeeping. Make this new 55 card collection part of your reality by following the link in this video's description to pick it up at your friendly local gaming store or at upperdeckstore.com. <laughs> The next game I wanted to tell you about, because I want to tell everybody about it, because I played it and it's awesome. Wait, was this going to be non-biased? No? Oh, never mind, because it's Acropolis, which was announced by Jamik and Hachette Games. You take on the role of one of the most talented architects in ancient Greece. No pressure, as you stand ready with the goal of building housing, temples, markets, gardens and barracks so you can grow the city and ensure it prospers. Also, you better believe you'll be scoring points as you raise your city's prestige through harmonious planning that conforms to specific rules. You can learn Acropolis in about three minutes, which I know because that's how long it took me to learn it in a crowded convention center, and the game felt like a mix between King Domino, Quadropolis, and Number Nine. Areas all score in different ways, but it's the value of that district times the value of your plazas. And yeah, you build out, but also up, and the higher the districts you build, the more they are worth. I love this game. It's fantastic, and the people at the UK Games Expo agreed with me awarding it both the Best Family Game People's Choice and the Judges' Choice Award. So look out for it as it gets a wider release as the year goes on. Talking about awards, I'll just take a pit stop here to tell you that Amigo Games and Magic Mountain won the coveted Kinderspiel des Jahres Award, beating out the competition from Schmidtspiel and Wolfgang Vorsch's Alshon Clever and the Quacks and Co of Quidlinburg. That was a lot of German words. We talked about Magic Mountain in more detail in a past episode, but I can't wait to get my hands on a copy of this mischievous witches and marble rolling game to play with my niece as soon as it's available, which winning the award normally means it's going to be available really soon. And from one Spiel des Jahres winner to another now with the third standalone sequel to the crime solving map exploring micro macro crime city with micro macro crime city all in. All in opens the next district of the crime ridden black and white metropolis crime city which for some reason people still live in. I'm just now realizing the city is actually called crime city. It's like Gotham. You'd just move, wouldn't you? Anyway, with this huge new city map 
which conceals 16 tricky crime cases, which are again awaiting to be solved by one to four amateur detectives. The stories in All In are said to be more sophisticated than ever, meaning that this third instalment is leaning the other way from the second game, Full House, which was designed with a younger audience in mind. I'm all in for this game, and I think this isn't the last crime spree you can expect in Crime City. So expect to be solving those cases soon in September when All In is released. Two more expansions are on the smoky horizon, starting with an expansion for Arcane Wonders game, Furnace, titled Interbella. Furnace is an engine building game in almost its purest form, other than the abstract nature of it being a game and not, you know, like, an engine. Each round has you bidding on cards to add to your engine, but also cards that you want to bid on but not win so that you can get resources from them instead. You then add your winnings to your tableau and run it as efficiently as possible to get points. Interbellum expands the game into the 20s and 30s of the 20th century where you will find new company cards and capitalists, new abilities, manager tokens, variable capital discs, a set of components for a fifth player and new agents for two player and single player games. And it's been described as being designed for players who are already familiar with the base game as the expansion is best played if all of its elements are added together when it's released later this year. And Houdini vs The Genie has been announced as the latest expansion for Unmatched. More Unmatched is always an exciting announcement to me, even if I physically can't get any more into my two boxes at this point. And yes, I threw away the inserts. I'm a monster. I don't care about the consequences. Unmatched is the massively asymmetrical miniature fighting game for two or four players, each hero being represented by a unique deck designed to invoke their style and legend. There's no word on how these new heroes will play, but my guess is that Houdini will be slipping away at the last minute as the genie pops up from nowhere. These expansions are standalone, so it's always great to see such cool innovation with the characters to give people jumping in points. So if this one tugs at your wallet strings, then it'll be available later this year. And now it's on to some brand new game announcements, starting with Galactic Resistance, the second game from Christian Martinez, and the second in what he has called his political trilogy, the first being 2016's Inish. Galactic Resistance is a 2 to 5 spacefarers game from Matago where you'll be building your team, adding new specialists to your deck of cards, and with this team, which I'm setting to the theme of casino heist music for some reason in my head, you'll discover new planets and systems, reconnect with lost civilizations, expand your influence, build embassies, and sow disorder in opposing factions, you know, just for good measure. And all this will be with the aim of racing your opponents to victory, as you send out emissaries to new planets, for example, which allows you to discover new civilizations or cement relations. But then your adversaries may try to convince that planet to join them instead and their own emissaries, causing disorder in the process and a super awkward ice cream social. Galactic Resistance is going to Kickstarter at the start of next year. <laughs> Jeffrey D. Allers is a fantastic board game designer, okay? I said it. So I was very excited to see that his previously Polish game was getting an English language re-implementation from Rio Grande Games called Twisty Tracks, which tells us that some people just want to get from point A to point B. But for others, the journey is the destination, and in Twisty Tracks, players are rewarded for both long journeys and arrival at point B, assuming not too many others arrive there first. I'm going to put these down now. The heart of this game is making the best decision with the tiles that you draw as everyone has their own playing area where on a turn each player draws a tile then places it somewhere in their frame so they can advance at least one of their trains along the track. When you advance a train you score a point each time it crosses the border between two tiles or between a tile and the frame. So you'll be trying to send trains on long looping journeys to score lots of points. I mean, yes, you want to reach as many stations as possible, but you also want to avoid collisions while sending trains to their final destinations to keep points coming, and Twisted Tracks is winding its way to us 
in October. And finally, this month, just a quick announcement that it's currently the Steam Summer Sale until July 7th. So this means that there are a ton of digital board games currently on sale. Far too many to mention, but Ticket a Ride, Terraforming Mars, Gloomhaven are all on sale, as well as hundreds of other board game titles. So if you wanted to pick something up, then now is a great time to grab a bargain. Chaz bought Yellow and Yangtze. Great game. But for more things to pick up and play, you can see what physical games are available right now in this board game buyer's guide, which I'm sure has no shenanigans in whatsoever.